Hi everyone, it's Bobby. I am here to share with you my latest project for Country Craft Creations Design Team. This is a uh, mini album um, using the uh, the circus paper by Cartabella. It is just the cutest paper. Uh, everything in this, with the exception of this blue polka dot, was in the collection pack. This piece uh, was in my mystery box and it works so pretty with this and it is a bow bunny paper but it just works so pretty with this collection I decided to use it on my front cover. Uh, the spine is a multicolored kind of a diamond pattern and the back is the circus paper. Then on the front I used one of the stickers and I fussy cut it out with some black card behind it and the little animals I had in my stash and then I went on Google and I found the shape of a circus tent and I it was quite a bit larger and I scaled it down to fit the front of this album and then fussy cut all the pieces and I had this little pom-pom trim in my stash and these little resin figures also I had in my stash and I thought the monkey looked cute sitting up on the top of the tent I folded the little sides back to make it look like the tent was open and I used a couple of the um, little, I call them candy dots, they remind me of that candy that used to come on a strip, I don't know what they call them, but anyway this ribbon also came from Tamara and she included quite a bit of seam binding in multiple colors and I've used some of that throughout. So when you open the album, on the front page inside of the cover I just made a tuck spot with one of the cut aparts and I have two photo mats in here um, you can journal put photos on them either one just slip right behind there and I added the be a clown with the clown picture I thought that was so cute this is just adorable paper then on this page the first page uh, this flips up and this flips down and there's room for several um, photo mats, journaling spots. I tried my hand at uh, the doodling of the journal lines so y'all can let me know what you think of that. It was kind of fun to do something different for me. I just added these strips from one of the border sheets and I thought that turned out really cute. And then I added this little tuck spot here it just says the greatest show on earth. And on the back side of that I just have a pocket with two, one of the cut aparts and a photo mat that I made and I used a lot of the stickers and I used uh, for photo mats the backing I used black, blue, craft uh, and red so I kind of mixed them up. This one kind of looks like a gatefold but it's not, it actually opens to the side and is held with a magnet. Now you could get away without using a magnet on this one if you wanted to if you put this on the outside it would hold your flap shut and that's just one photo mat that I made with the uh, craft card and all of the card stock that I used was um, oh golly I'm drawing a blank here it's from Tamar's store the artisan card stock jeez it's late <laughs> that's all I can say it's late on a Saturday night the next page, um, the one sheet of ticket paper is so cute and I cut a couple of little slits in it to make little pockets and these are from one of the cutout sheets and this is one of the tags that was in there and I used her seam binding and she sent the baker's twine as well. And then I have a double photo mat up at the top and I this little sticker is just stuck in the middle so that you can put something put your pictures behind it. Then on the next page I have two half pockets and in each pocket is a tag and a photo mat. But these are just the cutest little tags and cutouts they've made. I just put the word circus on this one from the sticker sheet and this one says join the fun. It has the lion sitting on the little pedestal. Such cute paper. Then on this one we have the lion tamer and the acrobat. Then on the back side of those I just have a little tuck spot on the lower one. 
and they're both black on the back side. And there was a whole sheet of these little ones and they're really cute. On the next page I used one of the <coughs> cut aparts, put a couple of little mats behind it. This opens out this way, gives you more rooms for photos and journaling and then it opens this way have another spot here don't you just love these papers and then I have slits cut in this one as well I need to back these with black or red or something but I have two slits cut in this ticket paper just to put more little little doodads it's just really pretty paper then on the back side of that I used a piece of her red seam binding and one of the stickers here on this pocket and then I have a photo mat here, and I just love this little clown. He is so cute. I had to put him in there somewhere because he's just too cute to be left out. And then on this page, we have two photo mats. It's holding this flap down. Got the little popcorn, two tickets, and another little blank spot. And it lifts up, and this is the pocket that holds that down. So they just go in the pocket here. And this is the last page. And I added this flap as an afterthought because it had this Circus Gallop musical sheet and I wanted to use the whole thing. So I added that flap so that I could put the rest of the song out there and I just ran two little strips of border down there. And then on the inside of the back cover I made a collage out of several of the stickers and two more photo mats. And that's it. It was really super fun to work with. So I hope you all um, like this album. Oh, did I show you the two, the little feet? See these little tiny feet? Those are buttons that came in the collection. Aren't they the cutest little things? We just cut the button thing off of the back and glued them on there. And I added a couple more of those little dots there. So. It was really fun to work with, and if you all uh, want to re make this album, there will be a tutorial following this walkthrough. Just stay tuned. And everything used here, with the exception of this polka dot, everything else in the album, well, and excluding the little resin figures, I already had those, but all of the papers and the cardstock and the chipboard can be purchased from Tamara as well as all the ribbons. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, we're going to make the uh, album for the the circus by Cartabella. Um, you can see I've already wrapped my album cover. Uh, if you've not wrapped one before, I will put a link in the description box for you to follow. Tammy has an excellent tutorial on how to build an album cover, any size album, and I can't do it any better than she did. So. I will give you a link to that and you can follow along if you're new to making album covers. Uh, I will then cover the inside of this with black. I just wanted to show you what I had done ahead so far. <clears throat> I like to pick out my papers for the outside cover before I get started on the pages so that I don't get down to the end of my paper and think, oh gosh, now I don't have enough left of the one I wanted for the cover because that I've used it on the inside. So I have double matted this is what's going to go on the cover and then I have one of the stickers that I put on black cardstock it says circus this little banner is going to go at the top and then I cut out the shape of a Turkish tent tent circus tent which I will further embellish and that will go on the front as well so I have those laid aside and I have this will be on the spine with white behind it and then this circus paper will be on the back and I'm double matting the outside it just kind of sets sets it apart from the black so that is what I have so far the first thing we want to do though is build our pages and I like to build my pages before they go in the album it's a lot easier to get a good smooth burnish when you're working on a flat surface 
So you will find the cut list posted on uh, Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations in the um, description box here below this tutorial and also on my Facebook page which is called Make Mine a Mini. So there are five pages that I have in this album. Uh, each one is cut, actually four of them, four of them are cut at eight and a half by six and a half. They're all eight and a half tall. Uh, their finished size is eight and a half by six and a half. Let me clarify that. But you're going to cut them at eight and a half by seven. And we're going to score each one on the long side at a half inch. So this is going to be what attaches to the inside of the spine. There's not going to be a um, hinge. There's not going to be a hinge. These are going to attach right to the book like that. Okay. The exception to cutting them is one page is cut at, I think it was ten and a half, ten and a half by seven. And that's this pocket page. And you will score down the long side at one half and then score it, I think it was two inches across the bottom. Where's my ruler? There it is. No, it's three inches. Did it say three inches? No, it's two inches. Well, I can't read, can I? Okay, so this is ten and a half by seven. We scored a half inch on the long side, two inches on the bottom, and then we're just going to cut out this little portion right here so that we can fold this up to make a pocket and this will attach to the album. At the top of this page, we want to add a flap. So, when we put the flap here, and the pocket down here, any embellishments like um, photo mats or tags will go in the pocket and they'll hold this flap down so you won't need a magnet or a ribbon unless you want one, which that's up to you. You can use that. So let me get some glue here and we're going to attach this right to the top. Make sure this is good and open. I haven't used it for a couple of days. <coughs> some glue on here. And then get a little overzealous with my glue there. And we'll match this up at the top. And make sure it matches to the right side edge, the outermost edge. It can be a little bit short on the left hand side where your fold is. It just gives you a little extra leeway on your your page folding without a lot of extra bulk in there. Okay. So that's all we have to do to the first page. And it lays nice and even. You see you've got just a hair off there which allows for it to lay without bunching up there. Okay, there's that one. On the second one. <coughs> Let me see this one also. Eight and a half by seven. Scored it one half inch. Folded under and burnished really good. Now this, what was I doing? Oh, this is going to go to the right side edge, about center ways. Now you can eyeball it or you can measure. I'm just going to see what it looks like. That is, I can't see for the glare of the lights. It's one and three quarters. And that's almost one and a half, so it's not quite center. I can go up a little bit. 
but this one is just going to open out like this. Let me burnish this a little bit better. It doesn't have to be perfectly centered, just whatever looks good to you. So I'm going to turn it this way so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to put it where it looks pretty centered to me. And match up my edges. at hand. Now this one you will probably want a magnet on. I think it would be a good idea on this page. Oops, I just pulled my little thingy out there. I've used this drawer so many times that's never happened. I'll get it back on there. So one positive and one negative. Okay. I have more trouble getting these off. side to hold down so I'm going to put it away from the edge and I might have to do another negative because I'm turning it upside down. No, it'll work. And then when we pull this off and we lay it down like that, it'll stick to the back and it'll hold this together. Easier said than done, for me anyway. I can make the easiest job hard. <coughs> so we'll close it down and press it real good. And there's the magnet on that one. So there's page two. And you don't have to put them in any particular order. Whatever you want to do is fine, 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 fine. Okay, now on the third one, these two flaps are going to go at the top, and I am going to put a magnet on them so that they open and close like this. And there will be a pocket at the bottom of this page. So let's put this <coughs> up here. And I'm going to put it down just about a quarter of an inch from the top so that whatever paper I decide to use will show from there. Just a little strip of something for an accent of color. Okay. Now this one is going to go underneath. And I want to line it up. Right at the edge. Whoops. To the edge, Bobby. Okay. That matches up good. This one to go underneath, this one to be in the way that's not perfect. Yeah, it's better. Now it lays right. Okay, a positive and a negative again. I'm 
Okay. I'm going to put my magnet on the underside of the top flap. I like to put them quite a ways away. <coughs> It's going to go down at the bottom, and I think it's three and a half. Come on, let me measure it. Yeah, three and a half by seven and a half. Scored on three sides at a half, and then I've lightered my corners, and I do want to taper the top. Okay, now we'll apply the glue and put this in the bottom corner. finger. Make sure my corners are lined up. Oh goodness gracious. I can't seem to get with the program here. one is going to have an upper and a lower flap and then we'll put a bracket on there to hold these two together and I'll show you that as we go along well, I haven't decided yet what order I'm gonna put these pages in the book but you can put them in whatever order you want in your book. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Okay, there's that. Looks like I got a little overhang over here. It's matching on the right side. all the way down. I'm just going to trim it with my scissors, I think. No, I'll do it with a paper trimmer. I don't trust myself to get it straight. I'm going to put it in 
the paper trimmer. Make sure it's going to match. <coughs> better. Okay. And then we have the bottom flap. And both of these sit right on top. Let me see if this one's a little too wide. It should be okay. Looks okay. Okay, let's glue this one down. Okay, now you can either do magnets or you can do a little bracket closure. And I'm going to put a bracket across here and across here and then run a tag through it. So you can do either one you decide. If you want to do magnets, now's the time to put them on there. And then this is the last one. And I took the last uh, page, eight and a half tall. I uh, scored it at one half inch, just like the other pages. And then I cut it in half at four and a quarter so that I could put a little pocket on it. So I am going to score these. <clears throat> these need to be five. That's four and a quarter, so they need to be five and a quarter, which they are. They're a little more than five and a quarter. They need to be five and a quarter by three and a half. So let me cut these at five and a quarter real quick. one on three sides at one half inch. So there's a half. Oh, that's a quarter. What am I doing? Half inch. It isn't going to show, so no worries. A half inch. And a half inch. Miter these corners at the bottom. Just be sure you don't get into your where your lines cross. You don't want to make a hole there. Taper your top two pieces. <coughs> Just reducing that bulk when you 
fold it over so you don't have a big bump there. Okay. So we're going to fold these under and burnish them. will go, these are our hinges that will attach in our little pocket. We'll go here so that we can put tags in it. Okay. You know what? I think I'm not going to hook them down yet because I think I want to um, punch a notch in them. And I need my paper on it before I punch the notch, so I'm just going to close pin them together. So that is page number five. So there's our five pages laid out. Uh, what I have to do next is pick out my papers that I'm going to use. <clears throat> and then we'll get back together. I'll have them all cut and I'll give you the measurements. And we'll um, get them all put together. I want to get them cut and get the edges of them inked. And then we'll start putting our pages together and then we'll put them in the book. All right, that way we have, it's easier to burnish them and get a good seal with your glue and whatever adhesive you're using when they're flat like this, as opposed to when they're already in the book. Okay, see you soon. All right, let's work on the cover of the circus album this morning. <clears throat> I'm going to keep the inside fairly neutral because these papers are so busy. They're just adorable, but they have a lot of prints. So um, I chose the spectrum paper in the antique lace color and I wanted a little extra color on my cover so I cut a one inch strip of the red white and blue striped paper to go along the edge and that way I could get front and back cover out of 112 by 12 sheet so what did I do with my glue bottle there it is we want to put these down and I want to do this before I add my pages <clears throat> so they're not flopping back and forth in my way. So I'm going to glue this down. And I'm going to get close to the spine as I can without going over that score mark and I want just a <clears throat> small border at the top and the bottom. Keep it as straight as I can keep it. Where's my, here's my. Some of these wipes, I tell you they work wonderful for many purposes but you have to watch because some of them are so linty. It's just irritating. And I want to make sure all my glue is distributed. Don't want any bubbles. And then I'm going to attach this little strip. I thought about making this, leaving it open for a pocket, but I don't think I will because I'm going to use an embellishment as a tuck spot. So I think that will add enough color and busyness to the page. I'm going to line it up at the bottom and along the edge. And press that into place. Okay. Uh, on this side, I have chosen one of the cut aparts, and I just, oops, let me cut that off good. Backed it in black. <laughs> the artisan cardstock. And I'm going to put it at an angle and just glue these two sides. And that will make a tuck spot on the inside of the front cover. One thing you want to make sure of when you're building your pages and all your embellishments is that you don't get 
too much on there because and I'll show you here in a little bit when you let me lay this one aside a second when you finish your album cover it should be no more than that and if your album goes like this once you get done and it, it won't close straight then that doesn't look right so it needs to sit up straight if you put it on a shelf or whatever okay so let's put the other side down This little strip just adds enough color to the front, so it's not too blob, but not too over busy either. Okay, and let's line it up at the bottom because I can see that best. For this side, I just created a collage with some of the stickers. And I just took a piece of black cardstock and started layering my pieces together. And I'm going to use that back here because I didn't have any more big stickers or cut aparts. So we're going to go up this side and along the bottom. Bring the little juggler guy down. And that's going to go right here. Oops. That will make a little tuck spot as well. for the outside of the cover. I'm going to start on it, but not completely finish it. It's just easier to put down the large mats while it's flat. So I'm going to turn it over and I have my ribbon I put down with um, score tape. And for the front cover, if you remember, I showed you this blue and white polka dot. And this was in my, uh, was not a part of the collection pack, but it was in my uh, mystery box. And it was perfect with these colors. So that's why I chose it. <clears throat> so I'm going to mat this on white, just to kind of set it apart from the black. Just want a little bit. 
black border. Everything that I've used in this project came from Tammy's store, countrycraftcreations.com. Now I love this polka dot sheer ribbon. Made the prettiest closure and it works perfectly with the papers. Okay, our back cover is the circus paper. So we'll do the same thing as we did for the front cover. Blue tip makes a lot of noise. in this paper. They're so bright and cheery. Okay, this one can go down on the back of the book. It covers up our rib enclosure and hides it. Just a hair. It looks like it might have a little overhang there. Yeah, I'm going to trim just like a sixteenth of an inch off of it. Maybe just a hair more. I don't want it to be hanging over the edges. That won't look right from the front. be fine. Okay, we got her now. Mm 
I think that'll be good. Let me set it up and see what it looks like. because I'm putting them down on white paper so I didn't feel like it was necessary. I don't need to hide the white edge when it's gone on a white piece. But you can if you want to for sure. decorating the outside after we do our pages. It's just it's easier to put these big pieces down when you can lay it flat and really get a good seal. lay this aside and we'll get busy on our pages okay guys for the pages here's what I've done so far I have glued down a lot of my flat pieces just to save time and um, I showed you gave you the measurements all of all the flips and flaps and doodahs and you can put them in any order that you want I chose to put this one that has the two flaps first and I cut my trim pieces that I wanted to use first and then measured out um, the others so that I could get a piece of a strip at the top and the bottom and I did put a magnet in this one and I tried my hand at a little uh, doodling to make a um, journaling spot and I put this strip of trim, a border trim that was in the collection with two more uh, photo mats, another little doodah down there, and that's what I'm going to make page one. Then on the back side, I just use this print with a piece of the spectrum paper and another one of the prints. And I went ahead and made this photo mat because I haven't backed it yet, but I will. Um, because I wanted to pick up the yellow on the opposite on the next page to kind of tie them together. So I brought this print over here, this one and this one. So it ties them together. Now this looks like a gatefold, but it is one solid piece held with a magnet. Then when you open it this way, you have two photo mats and two journaling spots. Now on this one I left, I did put a cut in it so that you can use some of your die cuts. It makes a little pocket in there. So, but I do want to back these on black cardstock before I put them in there. There's another one. So you can fit several in there. But it opens out this way. And you can get away without a magnet here if you want because this pocket would hold down anything you put in there. Let me see if I've got a big piece big enough. See if you had a photo mat to put in there. And you put large enough pieces in front of it that would hold it down and you wouldn't really need a magnet there. Then on the back side of this one, this is one that I want to show you that I did with the cuts. I'm using some scraps here. This is going to go here. Now this is one that I put a cut spot in and I wanted to show you if you'll take, I have two cuts in this, if you'll take 
a piece of um, one of your ephemera pieces or something, a photo mat that you want to put in here, then just draw a line to each side of the cut. Sometimes the cuts are hard to see from the back side depending on what your print is. So if you just draw a little line you can see where you don't want to put glue. So let's go ahead and put this one down. I just wanted to show you that that makes it a little bit easier. So we want to glue the side a little bit at the bottom just to hold it in place. We can glue up this side all the way to the pencil line and then we can glue the top to the pencil line and we can glue down to the four, first score line and over here we can glue down to that not score line cut line get this out of the way and then I can put this down close to the bottom into the side strip I want to put at the top and I'll put it down next so that it makes it easier to uh, get the two photo mats centered these little bottles I have trouble getting them to stand up I tell you okay so I'm put this at the top like so And then we can glue these down. Let me put this one here so I can see how they're going to fit. You know, I might need to. I think it'll be okay though. I want just a little bit of black showing. I need to trim that off. I should have measured it before. See, I told you always do your dry fit, and I didn't do it. So let me get a little snip off of that, because it's a little bit too long. Just want a little bit off of it. More glue on this one. I hear the baby. Hi, Jax. Hi. What are you doing? She's always full of energy in the morning. The little ones are always like that. And don't be getting into stuff and making a mess, buddy. Just a jabbering up a storm, aren't you? Huh? huh? Say what? <laughs> Little ones, I tell you. Hold on, man. Okay. Now I'm going to have room down the center for a little strip, too. chose to put, uh oh, all oh, my lights went out. Let me pause this real quick and see what's going on. 
Okay, so I did put a little strip between those two. Then I've chosen the two half pages with the little pockets. And I've just put solids on the back. That's the other one. It'll go below that one. And then page four, I've chosen the one that opens this way. And this way, I've got to find something to cover that. But this is another one that I put the cuts in. So I just wanted to show you that. So let me find some little cut aparts here. Some little die cuts. Here's one. So it's going to go in at an angle like so. So you want to make a pencil mark. I thought I had there's a pencil. Down this way. This way, because here's the end of your cut. Actually, here's the end of this cut. So we can that way you can get a larger insert in there. And then the other one is up here. And this might be too wide for that little pocket I cut. Let me find something narrow. And this one is more straight where the other one was at an angle. So we will mark it like from this cut line to this cut line. See how you can see it back here? So between these pencil lines, you don't want any glue. So let's go around the perimeter. I can put it up to the glue line. And then this at the top can be glued down. And this right here to the cut line. And just a little bit across the bottom. And then right here. That's all we want glued. So we'll put this one down. And this one will be page four in my book, but you can do, you can put them in any order you want. Okay, and I'm going to let that set up before I put any die cuts in it, and I'll come back and cut something for that one. Okay, so this one did have the magnet in it. There's the back side with just a pocket. And I did tie a little ribbon, a faux bow. And then on page five... I have chosen um, the last one we had, and it lifts up. I need to put something there as well, and you've got a little pocket down here. Now this one does not have a magnet in it. You can either hold it with a, a clip, or you can use, goodness, I'm knocking everything over, photo mats to hold it shut, which is what I'll do. I'll use photo mats. Then on the back side of that page, this is not included in your, well it will be by the time you get it, but this was not a part of the original uh, cut list. I decided to add this flap because I wanted to use this cir circus gallop paper that had the song on it. So I added this little flap to accommodate that and I used one of the die cuts here with a piece of the spectrum paper. So next thing is we'll put these in the book. We'll add these to the hinge and finish the front cover and then I'll go back through and do some more embellishing and I will show you the final walkthrough. Alright, be back shortly. Okay, let's put our pages in the book. So we'll bring the cover back and I'm going to start with the last page. I'm going to open it out like this, get my ribbon out of the way. Sure, I'm, yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Okay. 
So each page will set inside the spine just like this, centered from top to bottom as best we can. So on this half inch strip that we left on each page, we want plenty of glue because we don't want this little turkey going anywhere once we put it down where we want it. And I did not miter these edges. So we want to get it exactly where we want it. it from top to bottom just inside the let me see if I'm I'm pretty even from top to bottom I think and here's my baby wipe make sure I'm laying straight it looks pretty good, doesn't it, guys? Let me get a bone folder here. Press it down really good. Put it into place. Okay, next page. Same thing till we get them all in the book, and then we can go back and embellish each page and had photo mats and all of that good stuff. Okay. Get this one to sit down straight here. And we're gonna <coughs> if I get stuff out of my way, we're gonna line it up right behind the first one. Just like that. And make sure it's going to lay flush with that one. Yes, ma'am, it does. Make sure we don't have any glue. Got some baby white fuzz there. Okay, I'm going to push this one down. Really good. Now we've got our two half pages. <coughs> and they should sit just side by side like this. So let's put this one down. Some more glue on it. It has to be right or I just can't stand it. Alright, and then we get right there. Yes, much better. But I saw that when I did, I said I want to tear up my paper. that one. See, it would have pushed this one down too far too, so we had to fix it before we go any farther. 
Most goof ups are fixable. Okay, this one. It's going to go right here. And on it be down just a hair. Let me see. No, it's matching up okay. Oops. here this morning. There's three. Now page four. Actually now we're to page two. We got five, four, and three in there. I guess I said four because it's the fourth one I'm putting down. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's get this little turkey lined up. Let's see a little glue. doing albums like this. They're so nice. And I thought, if possible, I might squeeze in a little envelope up here to put, like, ticket stubs and things in. But we'll see how much space is left. You know, and they always give you brochures and stuff, but you've got pockets in here, too, that you could put those in. So... But I just thought an envelope would be cute in the front, but I don't know if I'll have the space for it. We'll see. Okay, let's flatten this out. Let's line this up. Make sure it's going to lay right. Yep. And it doesn't look like there's space for an envelope, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. And then I'll cut some strips to go down between each of these pages. Oops. I'll knock everything over, I tell you. Okay, so there's our pages in our album. I'm going to let them set up just a little bit. Make sure all my glue is dry. I didn't cut anything for the side panels as far as embellishing this. I'm just going to leave that in the back fairly plain. Um, I am going to put this circus die cut up at the top. I'll go ahead and glue that down. at the top. Oh, centered as I can get it. <coughs> now she sent me some twine and I tied, here it is, some knots in it and I thought maybe I would string that crossed here like that. And I need to make a second one. But I thought that was really cute. So I'll make a second one of those. I just tied some little knots in it. And I'll crisscross them and glue it down there. I need to make another one. But I've got plenty more twine. So I will come back and we will... I'm going to cut some more photo mats and put some of these on black cardstock. 
so that I don't take up too much of your time and then I'll come back and we'll finish embellishing the cover. Okay, so there, you can see you've got plenty of room inside. And remember I told you you don't want your album to protrude like that. It's not attractive. You want it to be straight. So with it sitting straight, look how much room you've got in there for embellishments and photos and stuff. So we're doing good. Alright guys, I'll be back with you soon. I'm going to make some photo mats and we'll finish putting this together in the little tent that goes on the front. Alright, be back in a bit. Alright, what I want to do now is show you how I made the little tent, the big top tent to go on the front. I uh, went on Google and I just Googled um, big top or circus tent shape and it came up with a pretty large shape of this and I just scaled it down to suit myself and then I just took my papers and cut them out by laying them on the shape. Now, all of this paper was in the collection kit. This one was perfect for the top. So I just pinned it down with paper clips, cut around each one, and I'm going to lightly ink it with black, just barely, just enough to get rid of the white edges. I don't want it to be really dark. And my black soot ink pad is starting to show wear and tear, so I'm probably going to have to get a new one next time I go into town. Now this little piece of star is going to go up underneath where I folded it back to simulate the open tent. And in the description box um, below the video, I will put a link to where I found this tent shape. So that if you want to purchase this paper from Tammy at Country Craft Creations and make a tent for the front of your cover, then you'll know where I got it. So I'm just going to glue all these pieces in place. And I just ran, this is a piece of her craft card stock, I just ran it through the big shot with an embossing folder to put some ridges in it so it would look like a piece of wood. And that's all I did. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is glue down this piece that goes underneath, maybe right here. Yeah, that'll be perfect right in there. sometimes I think I love these spectrum papers I tell you what they are so nice and they really make your collection stretch farther than what you would think they really do okay just a hint of black. Now I want to put just a dot of glue up under these flaps because I don't want them to get caught and get torn. Just a dot. I'm going to put this little wood strip down before I put the top down. sure that's going to cover. Let me move it down to, well, it'll be okay. It'll be fine there. So we'll glue the top down. I had some little pom-pom trim that I'm going to use around the top of them 
big top of the top of the tent. There's that. And now my little flag. Okay, there's my tent. He can go on the front now. And I'm going to add some pom-pom trim to it. And I don't know, I might use other stick stickers. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to put it a ways up from the bottom because I want to add some little animals that I had in my collection. But I have this little pom-pom trim. And I'm going to glue a little strip of it right here. Won't that be cute? Right along the big top. So let me cut that off. Oops. It unravels. Okay. So let me put a little bead of glue along there. I'm going to glue this down here. Right along the big top. Make, make it stretch there. Okay. Oops. Let me scoot it down a bit. You're okay, honey. A little dot of glue right here where that loose edge was. Where it started to fray. Glue that down. So we don't have any loose ends popping up. Okay. There we go. Okay, now I will go through the album. Add any photo mats, uh, embellishments, what have you that I think it needs yet. And then I'll come back and do a final walkthrough for you. But as far as putting this together, we've pretty well got it completed. So I thank you for joining me, and I hope if you make one, you'll take a photo and share it with me. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.